For this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to turn the whole thing over to a gentleman who is an enormous source of inspiration for me. This is somebody that I look up to and have a great deal of respect for, a film director by the name of Brett Culp. Brett has two films that he has done. One is called Legends of the Night, and the other is called Look to the Sky. They are documentary films, and they are absolutely beautiful. And I had an opportunity in May when I was at Sony Condo to talk with Brett. I asked if I could interview him. He agreed. And he is one of the most positive people I have ever met. He's enormously inspiring, and I thought this would make a great little interview for you guys to enjoy. And we're going to talk about his films and how he got them on Netflix. So without further ado, here's my interview with Brett Culp. Okay. Just talk to me. You okay, you'll be there. Okay, okay. okay. great. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's start... Um, your background, is your background in filmmaking? Or how did you My know? background was in weddings. So I was, I mean, I couldn't call it wedding filmmaking. It was wedding video when I was doing it. And so we were shooting analog, super VHS. I used Sony cameras when it was mini DV, the PD-150 and VX-2000. And I used all of those cameras in the early days. And, um, and so I spent about 10 years of my life in my 20s really getting good as a wedding cinematographer. And I started a little company. I traveled all over the world. I worked with a lot of celebrities and A-list people when digital was really first coming into its prime, uh, even though it was on mini DV tape. And we were creating these incredible things for billionaires and high profile people all over the world. And at some point, somebody in that process said, you're really good at this. Why aren't you making your own movies? Like why aren't, and, and it was one of those things where you're like, that's a really good question. And then when these, you know, DSLR came out with the shallow depth of field, and you know, I remember the first time I held a Canon Rebel, and I had a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens on it, and I looked at that image and I said, one day my great grandchildren are going to look back at this revolution we went through, and they're going to ask, what did our great grandfather do? Like, did he just do work for hire stuff, which is great, this is wonderful. But did he use that as a moment to create something amazing, something that left a legacy of good and positivity and made the world better through his talent? And it's like that sense of legacy kind of rang through my head, and I wanted to use the skills I had developed over those years and the now equipment, this amazing equipment we had access to, to make a positive impact with my skill. So... I remember I was in the bathroom one day and I had this weird idea and I told my wife, I think we could make a film that's about the power of stories and how stories change us. I'd spent my life as a filmmaker, you know, working for people, telling stories and watching how they changed them. And I said, and I bet a cool way to do it would be through the lens of people that love Batman. So let's, let's make a movie about people who were inspired as children by the story of Batman, this character who's, who's been around for 80 years, who's, you know, we could interview older people, younger people, people, in, I mean, there's been so many people. I bet there are stories of people and we can use that as a lens, as a way of talking about the power of story. She told me immediately, you need to take Kai to the doctor. He's got leukemia. For the next six months, we were in the hospital, probably five months. He would identify himself to the nurses as Batman. <laughs> so he took that strength, that courage that Batman has, and he related it to himself. When Bruce Wayne was a boy, he saw his parents murdered before his eyes. In the belief that one person can make a difference, Bruce Wayne became the Batman. He became a legend. He's able to take this tragedy and make it the source of his great power. Every kid who loved Batman, they'll tell you the same thing. It was, he was human, that he had no superpowers. Every kid identified with him. When we read his stories, when we see him in the movies, we see part of ourselves. Not only who we are, but who we could be. And I'm just running and the crowd just got so excited. They're just cheering, Batman, yeah, Batman. These children are fighting to get better. They're fighting for independence physically. And I think that they can see some of that in Batman. Uh, he lifted me up. Going through this class, you know, it's giving me a big point of self-reflection you know, on who I am and who I'm going to be. I was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy when I was two and a half. I, I would dream that I would wake up with superpowers one day, and when you realize that's not gonna happen, you say, well, wait a second, Batman doesn't have any powers. 
he does it just fine. I brought comic books into sessions and all these young people were so gravitated towards it. It helps people who aren't comfortable with therapy become comfortable with therapy. Kai's wish was to be in a Batman movie. There was no doubt in his mind that he was solving crime, that he was helping people, that he was making a difference. A person very often will get to the point they'll say, I've exhausted my potential. I can't do any more. There's nothing more I can do. But the lesson of the Batman, to me as a kid, was, you know what, you haven't even begun. What would Batman do if he had cancer? He would try to stand back up and fight it, like I did. It was kind of a crazy idea, but I started bouncing it off of people, and then we did an initial Indiegogo campaign that raised about $28,000. And I was like, well, this is interesting. People are excited about this. And as I got into the film, I think because I, my background was in weddings, I was so attuned to the emotion, to the heart, to the human part of it. And so I was attuned, tuning into the stories and the interviews where people were getting very emotional and very touched. And so I made it, ultimately made a trailer for the film, and, and my, one of my best friends said the tagline for this film should be, Batman will make you cry. Because I was here telling this Batman thing about people inspired, but it was very touching and how it had really, you know, changed people's lives in positive ways. This story and uh, how all stories had the potential to do that and all storytellers had the potential to do that. And um, we put that trailer out, raised another $50,000 in crowdfunding with that. And then we finished the film and, you know, all along the way of making it, people would say to me, well, what are you going to do with this movie? And I'd be like, I have no idea. Are you going to put it in film festivals? I don't know anything about film festivals. Are you going to put it on Netflix? I don't know anything about Netflix. Like, I don't, I watch Netflix. I don't know how films, I, I was literally, you know, like building the ladder as I was walking up it. And um, when we finished the film, I knew that theatrical was not a thing that most documentary films got. You know, most films do not get theatrical runs. Maybe they get film festival runs, but not theatrical. So I said, well, then why don't we try to do something cool with theatrical? And so we came up with this very strange initiative that I worked through our theatrical distributor to do where anyone in the world could request a screening of this film, Legends of the Night is the name of the film. They could request a screening of it in their local movie theater with the proceeds going to whatever charity they chose. And we didn't know if anybody would care, if anybody would do it, would they want to do it. But this thing just kind of created this viral momentum. And ultimately, it ended up screening in 110 cities all over the world, raising $100,000 for charity, mostly on $10 tickets. And there was no marketing budget. There was no PR budget. There was no staff managing it or promoting it. It was just this complete moment where the light in people came out where the good in people came out. And while a lot of my friends were, you know, discouraged and depressed every day watching the news and the comments coming through their Facebook feed, I was looking at pictures of eight-year-old kids dressed up as Batman in a movie theater raising money for charity at a film that I had created. And it, it changed my life because it changed the way I saw my work and what my work could do and how my art could affect others and how it could draw the best out in others because I, had, I wasn't paying these people to do this and there was no punishment if they didn't do it. It was just an invitation. It was, a, it was an opportunity for them to join us in something good. And what I found is, is that, that when you use art, art can be a tool for leadership in the world. Art, art can be an opportunity for whatever you're creating where you can sit, use it as a way to draw out the light in people. And now that's the mission of all my work, is to not just create films, but to work on projects that are larger initiatives, where the film is the message, but it's part of something bigger that really is making people see that themselves is very powerful, and also giving them an opportunity to make the world a better place. Our distributor was then able to, to go to Netflix with this film and say, look, it's not just a film that is touching and heartwarming, it's kind of a movement. Like there's this legion, I mean, there's already been tens of thousands of people that have supported this film and gone to movie theaters. What other docs are you picking up this month 
that have screened in 110 cities in theaters. I mean, that's that's absurd. And so I think that made, you know, net because ultimately the film was on Netflix and then it was on Hulu and now it's on Amazon Prime. Those 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 platforms, one right after the other, have just looked at this project not just as a film, but as something they wanted to be part of. And um, it built an incredible platform for everything I've done since then. I, I think, you know, when someone comes to me, because people are constantly coming to me now and saying, how do I do what you have done? You know, how do I take this vision that's in my mind and turn it into something that lives in the world and that people will embrace? And I think for me, the issue is, I, I think we all as professionals and, and even as, you know, amateurs and people that love to just create art, we need to find the place that's the intersection between the passion that we have in our heart and what the world needs. And when you can find that intersection between the thing you're excited about and what the world really needs more of, then you will always have an audience. You will always have people that are drawn to your work. Sometimes I think we get a little selfish and we say, well, this is for me, I'm gonna do it for me and I don't care about anybody else. And that's beautiful too. There's beauty in that, in creation, and that's important. But I think there is also always a way to take that thing you love that's beloved to you and do it in a way with a heart that this isn't just art for me, this is a noble quest I'm on to bring more light and more beauty and more of what it is to be human into the world. And I think when you, when you go into projects and go into art with that sensibility, the universe responds to that. That, that they that it kind of rises up the world rises up around you energies rise up around you that allow you in, into worlds that you wouldn't have thought of and so now whenever I go into a project I'm less thinking about what exactly the end of it looks like and I'm more thinking about the intention that I intend to bring to it what good am I trying to do and I then stay open to how that's gonna happen. These cameras we have are more powerful, more versatile, more incredible than anything that anyone has ever had in the history of the world. Billions of people have lived and died without a single record of that ever existing. And we have the power, not just with these incredible cameras, but just with our phones to document our life, share our life, use our stories and the stories that inspire us in a way that bring more depth and more meaning to the lives of others. And the question that we're asking ourselves that every superhero in every movie asks is, well, what do we do with this great power? And the Spider-Man answer is, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And I think we all kind of have to now live that way. And so anybody that thinks, I mean, that's where we come back to identity is a lot of us think, well, I'm not very powerful to create change. Nobody really cares my work. You know, people like it on Instagram or whatever, but it doesn't really, it's not really making a difference. I think, I think we all have that capacity, but it's about being willing to let the world around us be open to see the need and to use our skills and our gifts to meet those needs. And sometimes I think the internet has done a good job of making us think globally. But sometimes for us as artists, we need to go back to a local kind of thinking. Because I get it, sometimes you're looking at it and you're saying, well, I can't fix this global problem. Right, but with your art, you can make a huge impact in your community. And if you focus on that, it's amazing the lives you could change over the course of a decade with your work. I have a friend that is a photographer that gives some time every month to go into spaces like boys and girls clubs and spaces where you know teens and young people who, who struggle with self-image. She goes in with her camera and takes these amazing portraits of these kids. And when she then a week later delivers to these kids, they've never seen themselves that way before. They've never experienced that before. And it's, she tells me these stories about how amazing it is to see their whole face change because now they're seeing themselves in a way they've never seen themselves before. And I think art and stories have the ability to change fundamentally the way we see our own identity. And when that picture changes, everything changes. Mm -hmm.